Welcome to another unit in this Excel course. This time I'm going to talk about measures of dispersion. Here I already prepared some small data set which we can use in this context. Well, first off, when I say matters, uh, measures of dispersion, what do I actually mean by this? Well, first off, we can differentiate whether our data set is ordinally or metrically scaled, because for ordinal data, we can only calculate the range or the interquartile distance. If we are having metric data, we are actually a bit more flexible. Then we could calculate on the one hand our standard deviation, our variance or the coefficient of variation. So, well, here we have actually marks or results from an exam. So we know they are at least ordinals. So we can use range and interquartile distance. Well, range as such, if we just try this here, we see there is nothing like range in Excel. But what we can do is basically use the definition of the range and go with maximum of this column minus minimum, which is basically the formula for the range. So this way we get our range. Well, it's between 1 and 5, so that's actually Four, so that's correct. The same thing applies for the interquartile distance. If I start with IQD or interquartile or stuff, this does not work. But what will work is that I can use the quartile version. So here either the including or the excluding will work. And what I'm going to do is for this use the third quartile minus and again the same set minus the first quartile. That's again the definition of the interquartile range or interquartile distance. That's third quartile minus first quartile. So that's like the middle 50%. That's all of this. That's the middle 50%. That's the height of the box of a box plot. Okay, so we've seen for ordinal data a bit of a problem. We have to do this by hand, but well, in the end, not a big deal. So at this point, I know it's not really perfect because of the guys with a 5.0. So we could change those numbers to 3 or two and three. There are some changes here. And then, well, at this point, I can assume that there are more or less, well, including distances, which make sense, which I can interpret. We have an absolute null. So basically here, all the things I need to say they are metric are more or less fulfilled. So at this point, I can apply my measures of dispersion for metric data, meaning I can calculate variance, I can calculate standard deviation, and well, building on them, the coefficient of variation. Okay, how about if we start with this with the variance? Well, here, if I just start typing, I see I get var. But I get a lot of different things here. Down here, I have var a, var P A. That's more or less the same thing again, how to treat non numbers. If I use any of the first ones, var P or var S, will ignore anything which is not a number. The var A will treat text or other stuff again as a number, as a zero in this case. Var P A, similarly. So we exclude this stuff because, well, my opinion doesn't really make sense. Um, and well, we assume if we want to do statistics, we're doing statistics with numbers, with numerals, and not with some text, which is then interpreted to be zero and distorts the whole measure. So, okay, we use here var, and then we have the difference with p and s. Well, s, as is written here, 
it's based on the sample whereas p is for the whole population in other words p is the uncorrected as is the corrected variance so when i work with sample data which this more or less is i use var s you can apply this then here to this whole set gives me this variance if I have the variance, I can also get the standard deviation by simply taking the square root of the variance. That's one way to get this. The other way would be to actually use the formula for the standard deviation. And here we see this down here. We have whoops, STDEV, standard deviation. And again, the same stuff as before, P, S, V, A, uh, also A, and P, A. Again, we do not talk in more detail on the A and P, A versions. That's where the text is interpreted as zero. But here we have P and S. So again, S refers to sample data, P to the population. So P is the uncorrected, S is the corrected version. So here again, we use the corrected version and get the same result as up here. So we also see if I use the var s, not the var a on this stuff, it will disregard all the empty cells down here. So if I want to make my life easy, I don't have to select the whole area here by hand, could just go with the whole column of b double point b. Okay, so this gives me my variance, my standard deviation. And for the coefficient of variation, what I'm doing here is getting rid of the unit I have. I'm getting rid of this by dividing my here standard, oh sorry, this here, my standard deviation by the average. So there is no specific formula for this in Excel. So we're going to do this by hand. Take standard deviation, divide this by the average of those numbers, giving us here a coefficient of variation of roughly one third, so 0 0.34. Well, that's the standard, what's called them, um, measures of dispersion. And well, as I said, this is the topic of this course. So we are at its end and I hope you enjoyed listening to it. I hope you learned something from it. And if you want to see more on Excel, feel free to visit the rest of the course or have a look at the corresponding playlist. I say goodbye and see you next time.